disease. Once on the moth's head, it knows mysteriously just which direction it must take through the jungle of fur to reach the ear. There is one great danger in all this. Blocking up an ear inevitably makes it useless to the moth. We could live in and if the moth can't houses. hear, it can't avoid the bats that hunt it. That would be as disastrous for the mites as for the moth. So the mites obligingly occupy only one ear and always leave the other I heard the boat doesn't make doesn't make Here us ram into any using one sea part of the ear to yeah. stacking their droppings, no, I think another for laying their eggs, because it's so slow for rearing their grubs. So plenty of time to get out and of how the way. do their offspring find another of these highly specialized homes? Why, of course, by clambering down their host's tongue as it drinks and waiting on the flower for another moth of the same species to turn up. Cormorants! Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> They're usually called sea ducks. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. But parasites are themselves Australian frail. sea ducks. This little mouse that lives in Central America regularly carries a dozen or so passengers wriggling around in its fur. Okay, you better sit down and put your seatbelt on, bud, because we're getting off. Watch out, Cormoran! <laughs> put your seatbelt on, buddy. Oh. Don't wonder! Yeah! To get out of the way in time! They dove too! has several holes in the forest and all are this cord. infested with yeah. beetles. When a mouse settles down to rest in one, the beetles drop off and go hunting for the fleas mm, in the, the nest line. So the beetles, far from injuring the mouse, 